Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna go over a little bit of updates that we got going on in the little fish room, fish area. Uh, planned updates, uh, like things like this, and uh, updates to my plants and all that stuff that's in the little container. And unexpected updates that I found in the fish room, AKA, uh, so I guess, I guess some new critters decided to hang out in the fish room, but we took care of that, we took care of it. And uh, we'll go over that later on. And then also, this setup right here. It's looking a little empty, right? Pyara seems to be missing. That's because Pyara is here now. I didn't get a chance to record the whole process because the last couple of weeks I've been super busy with life and stuff. But we're gonna go ahead and go over everything today. You don't, I don't really get a chance to see my quarries as much, but look at that school of corridor just kind of chilling back there, let me see. If I can get a clearer shot. Can't tell if it's in focus right now, I hope it's in focus, but that school of quarries back there is just chilling. Look at them. I don't, know if you, I don't even know if you guys can see them, I don't even know if they're in focus right now, but that is a school of dwarf corridors. But yeah, back then when I had the scorper cat, all of these fish would have been goners by now, but I think because the gopher cat is way bigger now, so it's not really um, looking into like killing these guys. It's more so just waiting for me to feed it. But uh, yeah, gives me the opportunity to keep smaller fish again. This is probably my only predator that can't catch these guys. And um, I don't think he minds at all. But yeah, today's update is not mainly about this tank right here. Nothing really changed with this one, but it is about this guy right here. So the Pyara is now in the five foot tank, chilling underneath this log right here. This guy has a lot of room to grow in this tank, but the only bad part is now that it's in a new environment, it doesn't want to eat. When I first added him into this tank, it was kind of chilling in this corner or in that back corner. It wasn't really coming out as often, but now that it's gotten a little bit comfortable, I mean, it's been here for, I would say a little bit less than a week and it's coming out way more now usually it patrols but i have the camera kind of in its face right now so it's all the way back there the pyra's favorite spot is along this shadow right here so it'll kind of just stay in the darkness and then whenever i throw food in it'll try and come out but it just hasn't eaten yet i think it's because it's a new environment it's way bigger than the 40 gallon over here so yeah i think it's just kind of getting used to uh, the new home, but definitely has a lot of room to to wander around and stuff. So, yeah, glad. Oh, let's see, hanging out in the shadow now. It just does that all day, which is kind of cool. I was thinking that it liked the darkness, but when I moved the light from there all the way over here, this side was super dark, uh, especially turning off these lights up here. Um, this side was really dark, and it would never go to that side. It would always hide underneath this log thing so maybe it's not liking only the shadow maybe it likes the little cover here so yeah i'm not really too worried about it it just likes to chill right there when the geo was in here these two would get picked on i mean the geo picks on all the bashirs it doesn't really matter the size and also when i had the wolf in here they would get picked on super super hard but the pyara is kind of it doesn't really pick on anyone so yeah, I, th I think it's a lot better for these two anyways. Speaking of the wolf, the wolf is actually in here now. I originally didn't want to add the wolf back in the 40 gallon, but it actually worked out for the better because this guy right here started to show its wolf traits and started fighting with these guys over here. So when I had the wolf in this tank, it would always hang out in this top left corner. And then whenever these big Bashirs come up for air, the wolf would strike him for some reason. Even though these guys are pretty big, armor is like really, really strong. The wolf didn't really do too much damage, but it's just a stress because these guys need to come up for air and the wolf just smashes them, just tackles straight into them. And I didn't want these guys to be stressed out. So I think this is the best combo here. Moving the Geo from this tank to this tank caused these Bashirs to not stress as much. Moving the wolf from this tank to this tank caused uh, these Bashirs not to stress as much. And then moving the Pyara from this tank to this tank, I think ultimately makes the Pyara stress less. So hopefully when this guy gets used to this tank, and then also this guy get used to this tank, 
we'll have some nice feeding clips for you guys. You know, I'm actually really glad I didn't get the hopliest or hobliest uh, versions of the wolf that gets super big. This one is an erythernus, so it only gets about eight inches. The tank width is only 18. The length is 36. So technically, it's not too bad of an enclosure because it's never gonna even be half the size of this panel right here. And if it's the only fish in this tank, it's not too bad. Anyways, that's enough of this guy right here. Let's go ahead and move on to this right here. So one of the things that I really did miss at the old house was the ability to keep plants on top of my tanks. So I had pothos growing like crazy, no issues and all that because I had a window that I did have a love-hate relationship with. Over here, I don't have a window. Uh, and even though I can record better footage and don't have to worry about glare and all that stuff because the window is actually all the way over there. I can't keep any house plants on top of my tank without the support of extra lights. So I went ahead and ordered me a grow light. It has its own built-in timer. Then I went ahead and put it on my Manfrotto tripod, put it on top of the tank, built a little, uh, I guess, plant root cage thing. And now I have a Monstera on my tank. There's a couple of house plants that you can keep in water and don't have to worry about like soil and all that stuff. Even though I did have all this LECA here ready to go, I was gonna make like a makeshift planter box up here with the air pump pumping water into it and then that water going back into the tank uh, through this. But then I was thinking about it. I think this is a lot better. Uh, no extra pump needed. Just wanted to add some air to push air up and flow but I think this is gonna work out pretty good. So I wasn't going to put Monstera in my tank. I was going to grow out this little pothos right here. But then I saw this in my kitchen. The Monstera was chilling in this vase for a pretty long time. My fiance put it here and it wasn't dying. In fact, it was actually growing. So I figured that I would just put it in my aquarium, looked up if Monsteras can grow on top of aquariums and stuff and it actually can a lot of people actually have them clipped onto aquariums and filters and all that stuff i'm pretty sure monstera can grow in water for a long time like this but in the aquarium it's going to have a lot of excess nutrients and then when the plant gets bigger it's going to get a lot heavier it's probably going to grow like this it will definitely be a problem the good thing about monsteras is it's really green it's a big plant or it could be a big plant later on in the future and uh, it has the ability to absorb a lot of nutrients because it's kind of a fast growing plant. I only had this in here for about, I think it's, I think it was, it's definitely less than a month, maybe a couple of weeks, and it's already growing a baby right there. I only thought that it was gonna have these kind of leaves grow really big, but yeah, this new one's sprouting. Let me see if I can get a better angle. Get it. But check out this root system though. Jeez, Lewis. So when I first put it into the tank, I think the roots were only about to here, like this part. And then these new ones grew, especially these two super long ones. I think these longer ones too. Oh, actually no, this came with the plant. It's only these two super long ones. They grew crazily. And I think when it grows long enough, maybe up to this bulkhead delete thing, I might just move the roots like manually and put them here and then try to weigh them down and then hopefully have the roots run across the bottom of the tank. I don't know if that's gonna pick up more nutrients and all that stuff, but uh, we're just kind of experimenting right now. But yeah, I'm really excited about this Monstera project because these guys over here, they they poop, man. They, they really poop. These ones over here poop too. So yeah, these big guys and then these guys over here, they definitely put out some bio load. And even though they're both connected to the sump, which is filled with K1 if you don't know, uh, we need a little bit of a nitrate filter. Just chilling, dude. These ones are my favorite, man. Look at them. Look at them. They look sick. Anyways, we're definitely getting off topic. Oh, I do need to give you updates on this one right here. I use styrofoam to kind of close off the enclosure so the heat stays in but you can see the terrarium is empty now it's been cleaned out ready for a new creature or a new 
animal and stuff because the picture plant is actually right here. If you guys are new to the channel, this is um, my predator plant. It is what kind of got me into keeping predator plants and all that stuff because pitcher plants do things like this where they kill bugs. And growing this one right here has definitely taught me a lot with keeping predatory plants. And then also I have these two right here. This is a B52 Venus flytrap and then this one is a regular Venus flytrap. But you know, we're going through a dormant season right now. Uh, these pitcher plants don't really go crazy when it comes to being dormant and being cold and all that stuff. But Venus flytraps do, and um, yeah, this one's just kind of taking it. There's a couple of black Venus flytrap heads here, but like I said, it's going through a dormant season, and once it gets warmer, it'll start to recover and look a lot better, so just kind of waiting for that. But this guy, look at him. I knew I had to move this guy out of the terrarium because I found myself just trimming pictures and trimming leaves, and I was just restricting its growth, kind of stunting its growth in this terrarium here. It's kind of small it's like 12 by 12 by 18 i think it's not it's not a huge terrarium and i figured that it would be a lot better if i just took it out and then um gave it its own pot and uh ever since then it's just growing like this new stem is new and then uh these pictures are new this one's new so yeah it's just kind of growing now in this area and eventually i'm pretty sure these pitch these venus fly traps are gonna have to move up here this one I'm gonna have to move into the middle because this plant gets pretty big. So yeah, it's gonna be sick. I do want to get the other variant where the pitcher is like, like as big as a soda cans, and those are the ones that can eat like mice and birds and rats and all that stuff. Speaking of mice, we I didn't even say this. I didn't even post any updates about this, but we did have an unexpected visitor in this fish area, fish room, and it was a field mouse. Uh, I know it was a field mouse because when I used to live at the other house, uh, we've seen like mice and all this stuff that looks like a city mouse. Uh, this one right here was a field mouse. I was changing the water on uh, this tank right here and I just saw something fly by, like fly from this tank to that tank. So then I went ahead and added this trap and put it underneath the tank. And then like a day after, this is what I found. Mina. Oh, yes. Oh. Uh, I'm not gonna show you guys how we euthanized the mouse. Um, I was gonna try and release it and all that stuff, but it was really stuck on the glue and there was no way that it was gonna survive. But yeah, that was really interesting and I actually have one more trap left. You know what? Let's go ahead and check the trap. All right, this is my first time checking it. I, I hate checking this because I don't want to see like two eyes looking at me, but all right, nothing's on there. That is just peanut butter on um, a glue thing. And what they do is they go to get it and then they get stuck. So nothing's on there and we're good. I just, I just kind of leave it there in case there's more. So that's the reason why I kind of wanted to have a different type of Nepenthes or pitcher plant, the ones that get super big, because they would just eat the mouse. And uh, we can just kind of have it in here or move it up here or put it on top of the tank or wherever. But yeah. If you haven't had any kind of predator plant, carniv carnivorous plant, uh, pitcher plants and Venus flytraps are really fun. And uh, yeah, that, that's the reason why I love keeping this little enclosure here. Ever since I added these guys here, zero mosquitoes. Spiders get destroyed. And uh, yeah, I don't have like gnats and flying bugs and stuff because they all just get attracted to this thing. And then it just feeds my plants. All I gotta do is give it distilled water every once in a while and it's good i'll show you guys how i water this plant let me know if i'm doing it wrong and that's pretty much it so i give it a little bit of water it takes care of my bug problems i think it's a fair trade so that's pretty much it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed it pyra's in its five foot tank monstera project has been introduced and starts now and then also if you guys have any recommendations for the terrarium in here let me know down in the comments below hope you guys enjoyed today's video let's thank you guys for watching stay tuned for the next one peace guys